Great. Well, we'd love to see the lab now. If you want to yes, take us around. Yes, I'd love to take you around, and I'll be able to show you some of our new tools that just are uh, we're just now starting to use, and they haven't been used commonly until now. So first of all, I'm going to show you our luxury sleeping accommodations, and our, our camera person, Kip, is right here, and he can show you that we're heavy here in the equipment phase of uh, the stage out for tonight. So we've got our cameras. Kip is our camera person. Uh, we've got the luxury bunks, as you can see, three on either side. Kip, if you can move just slightly sideways, we can show you how we sleep at night. We can, the world's best television set right there, live all day, all night. Uh, we've got our Doxa watches, which uh, <laughs> we have about $100,000 worth of watches down here for the very reason that because we're saturated, dive computers don't work at Aquarius. And the reason for that is dive computers quite literally get bent, or they get the bends, just like a diver would if they were to go to the surface from here. Hmm. So what we use are analog watches, which gives us our bottom time and therefore keeps us safe. So sometimes old school is new school in this particular case. Now we've got Ryan right here. Ryan LePete. He is one of our technicians. He runs the habitat along with Mark uh, Hosbeck, who's on the other side. And he makes sure that we're okay, that all our uh, oxygen levels and CO2 levels are good, and the pressure in here is equivalent to the outside pressure. We make sure that the temperature and humidity is okay. As you can see, we do have communications over there, uh, including text messages. And the fact that you and I are able to speak over Skype is a testament to this being an amazing underwater classroom using a technology that we take for granted on land, but is available for the first time on a Cousteau expedition. Now, these are your circuit breaker, just like at home. Probably the most shocking to people is how, uh, how little our kitchen is, but this is our kitchen right here. And basically, as I mentioned, we cook with the uh, microwave and hot water, and that's it. What do those two what? levers do underneath the sink? Ah, good question. So the water fills up in the tub, and we have very limited water down here, and we have to be very careful with the amount of water we use. So we want to make sure that we don't waste water fresh water that is as it goes down and when the sink fills up a little bit with water we bring this down to drain the sink. So this is a sink drain and of course this is a village drain. In any event we have a few of those around just to make sure that we don't overflow inside the habitat. Now um, I think we're done here with the exception of course of where I was sitting our meeting area our dinner table, and the general living area for all of us. And it seats for very comfortably and cozy. Now, here we go. In here, made his way in here, but we also see Andy. Andy is one of our mission scientists. He is a PhD candidate at FIU. And Andy is now working on uh, predator prey behavior. Actually, you're setting up your equipment for tonight, I believe. Yes, indeed. And uh, can you let us know exactly what you're working on? So we're looking at how predatory fish impact the behavior of herbivorous fish on the reef. So the herbivores are really important for eating algae and keeping coral reefs healthy in a coral dominant state. But we tend to find that when you lose predators in most systems, things kind of drastically change. Actually the indirect effects of predators, because it's not just how many fish they eat, but actually their ability to scare other fish and change their behavior. So we're looking at how the presence of predators will change the behavior of terminals on coral reefs. Great. Thank you, Andy. You got it. And Adam is working here, and I think the, uh, the station is down right now, but Adam is working here at this station uh, with regard to the 3D holographic sonar so that we can see what these animals are doing on the reefs when we're not around. So quite literally, we're using sound to create imagery the way a video camera would with light, except that light is very disruptive to animals, so that in this particular case, we can actually see the animals through sound. And that gives us a much better view of what happens to, uh, to animals when we're not around. Uh, and for a film, 
to say boon because it really does give us an amazing view into a vastly underexplored world. So actually, Adam is now putting it up right now. You can see this is a live view, and you can see some fish swimming around, and this is all done by acoustics. So I don't know if you get a good view of that. You can find it online. But you can also find it online. Let me see if I can. There you go. And you can see some critters swimming around, and you can actually make out that these are different species of fish. So combining uh, Adam and Andy's work is of paramount importance to get a full picture of what's going out on out on the reef. We've got our communications, our wireless communications to the divers when they're out in the water column, and that couples to my favorite part. Keep that door open. Open up, please. Thank you. To the dive operations which is essentially our front door to the ocean world. And that communications that I was mentioning connects directly with our helmets, which are commercial dive helmets. You've got this one here, this one, this one. We usually go out three, two or three at a time, and, we're, and we can communicate back with the habitat at any given time. Additionally, we use these full face masks. I don't know if you can see that because I'm holding it up. I can see them, yes. That full face mask, which is a military issue full face mask, also allows for communications underwater when we don't need the helmets and we just want to use a face mask. And so, open to the water right over here. So this is this is one of the most fabulous parts of this particular place because at any given time, if you want to go take an ocean walk, all you need to do is walk down your front stairs and go into the ocean, which is right there at our feet. And it's one of the most amazing feelings to be able to do that for as long as you want. How high is that off the ocean floor? We're uh, about uh, 10 feet or so off the ocean floor. So it gives us enough space to go under and to come back. And that, for those who like to take showers, we have to take showers before we go in the habitat to avoid salt water corrosion in the dry part of the habitat. That's our shower right there. Uh, so it's a very cozy place, for sure, for six people for 31 days. But essentially, that's the short version, or the, the, the five, uh, the, the nickel tour, so to speak. Uh, I won't explain all the valves and everything else. But you can see that it's a combination of new and old technology that makes this possible. Two things that we have here that I haven't mentioned yet. So we have a PAM, or a fluorometer, that shows you, and of course our scientists can do a better job than I night now, but this phenomenon gives us a sense of the health of coral reefs without being invasive. And they have a um, optic cable as a light meter to test for that kind of thing. Now there's another one, a handheld, a handheld 3D sonar or hologram imager that feeds the hard hat, or I'm mean, sorry, the, uh, the heads up display that we use to see in the dark without using cameras at all. So that's basically what's happening here at Aquarius and some of our toys. Great, thank you. So you have uh, how many days left then? 26 days left? So we are now on day five, so we have 26 days left at the Aquarius. And uh, it, uh, to me, it's not nearly enough because we have so much left to do. But uh, you know, that's uh, that it is what it is. <laughs> what What do you think will be the the biggest challenge uh, over the next twenty six days? Uh, you know, I think the food is certainly always a challenge. Uh, being away from friends and family, uh, being away from my my favorite pet, who has been with me for thirteen years. Uh, and, and having a, uh, a hard time because she's old. Um, Is that other a, than that, a cat? Been, no, she's, she's a dog. She's my dog, Heidi. And uh, she's uh, getting towards the end of her life. So I don't like being away from her for that long. I'm used to going on expeditions, sometimes 11 months at a time. But this happens to be one of those times uh, that, that it makes it a little bit harder when you have a loved one who's having issues. But that said, I mean, it is a once-in-a-lifetime experience to be here at the Aquarius and to be able to live down underwater for a full 31 days. Great. Well, there they go. They're leaving. They've, they've spent their hour. They've got to go. 